So whenever you guys are ready, can you sure. talk through what you put together? Okay, you can take control of the button. To <laughs> okay. Start the first image. So I should push it? Yeah. Oh, so. man. Hello, everyone. My name is Howard. <laughs> Um, you want to introduce your name? I'm Michael. I'm Peter. Yeah, so this is our final project. So what we've done is we've created a 16-bit color VGA uh, display adapter. And so this is just a sample image of uh, Yuga Lake. And we've preloaded some additional okay. uh, sample images inside of Flash that I'd like you to step through. So, so j just to be clear, that's displaying from a Pico. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. It's yeah, displaying it's from this. From a single Pico. So it's actually really interesting because what we've seen is that there have been other groups that have attempted 16 bit color but have never been able to get the colors themselves to show. So, as far as I know, this is the first time that we've done any person's done 16 bit color, including like projects online. There's no one has done 16 bit color and gotten all of the colors to show. 16 bit, 640 by 480? This is actually 400 by 300. 400 by 300. Yeah. Okay. Well, asterisk is technically 399. But <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's, we'll go into that a little bit more in detail. And uh, the standard that we're following is actually the 800 by 600 timing scheme. Okay. And we've actually, inside the code, leveraged some of the unique characteristics of 800 by 600 to actually get the, the display working like this because um, if we had actually used a uh, different schematic for designing uh, the timing, uh, we'd actually run out of instructions in PIO. So uh -huh. we took advantage of a very unique feature of this specific resolution to get this feature. So you can go ahead and step through the other sure, images. So I'll push the button here. Nice picture of the clock tower. It's under construction. <laughs> wow. Push it again. This is a Duffield, Duffield Hall, of course. Mm -hmm. Again, the atrium, New York City. Wow. Yeah, so the colors really pop. That's what we realized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then back to that one. So how many? That's how many pictures? It's uh, six images, and six that images. completely fills up the uh, flash. Okay. So the main uh, thing that you realize is obviously the colors. So of course this is sixteen bit. Uh, looking at the hardware. Uh, you can see that we basically interfaced uh, the 16 GPIO pins on the left of the Pico through a R2R lighter deck. Uh -huh. And the R2R lighter deck is here. And then the output is uh, blue, green, and red. And so that's just put into this uh, pin board. And then we're basically pushing that through VGA to the display. Gotcha. So this is the actual hardware is the 16-bit uh, deck and specifically we're using 16-bit color or RGB 565, so it's five bits on red, six bits on green, and five bits on blue. And this uh, is also known as quote, real color, as okay. defined by the VGA spec. So, so th these are your 16 bits of color going through an R2R DAC, which is right. implemented down under here, which goes into your red, green, and blue color lines, which ultimately goes into the VGA. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then, of course. We did this just to make it look a little bit prettier. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd like to now go into some of the optimizations that we were uh, forced to make and why actually 800 by 600 is such a unique resolution and actually allows us to do this project in the first place. Uh, that's because uh, looking at the 800 by 600 timing spec, you'll see that in the vertical timing, What's unique is that we only have a single front porch line, whereas in a spec like 640 by 480, we actually have to deal with 10 front porch lines. This is very critical because if we have to deal with 10 front porch lines, we're going to need to have a loop that decrements a counter from 10 down to 0. Whereas if we have just a single front porch line, we can actually save a lot of instructions by just waiting for a single interrupt from the uh, end of the horizontal timing which is very cool because this allows us to basically save tons of instructions. So we only have a single weight block in our PIO. I like to- And just to be clear, the, the, the importance of saving instructions is because your VGA driver is implemented in a PIO state machine. Correct. Right? And you only have 32 instructions right. to spend. So every one you can save means a lot. Right, exactly. Okay. And we actually need to save those instructions because later on, we're gonna to need to adjust the timing on the horizontal state machine. Okay. And so by saving, instructions here in the vertical state machine, we can use those in our other vertical state machine. So that's actually very critical. Okay. 
So that's why from the front porch, we are only waiting one time for the interrupt from the uh, H-Sync. Right, which is different from like the the VGA driver that we used for Lab 2, for Correct. instance, yeah, implemented which, 640 by 480, right. which had a front porch of like 10, 10 I right. think, right? Exactly. Okay. So okay. this is the main place where we were able to save those instructions. Yeah. So I'd also like to go into some of the uh, timing details uh -huh. a little bit more in depth. Uh, that's because uh, just by looking at this, you see that uh, the uh, pixel timing is actually 36 megahertz, which is actually really cool because I know that uh, in our previous VGA driver, we implemented uh, a state machine at 25 megahertz, but, mm -hmm. it, but the spec actually called for something a little bit higher than 25 megahertz. But since the pixel frequency here is exactly 36 megahertz, we can operate our CPU at precisely 270 megahertz and then do a clock div of 7.5, thereby doing 270 divided by 7.5 yields 36 megahertz exactly. Okay. And this is perfect for all of our other timings because it means that our timing here is actually super accurate. It's essentially exactly according to spec. Okay. And this is perfect because it means that the image that we get on the display doesn't have any flickering whatsoever, even at a high refresh. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, so this is the main thing about our timing. I think we can go into the next segment. So uh, we created an uh, app on Visual Studio uh, that runs on this computer, it runs on Windows applications. And what it does is it basically runs a ray tracer, or actually say a path tracer, and then pushes the color values over UART to the Pico. And so I think we can do that. So let's just clear the screen. Just to make sure I understand, you're going to run a program on your computer that implements a ray tracing or path tracing right. algorithm, and then communicates the image to render over to the Pico, which will then render it? Yeah, okay. yeah over a UART. Over a UART connection, okay. Yeah, so uh, I guess, Michael, you can kind of explain what we've kind of done here, why the image is rendering like this. Yeah, so we used um, an online repository called Ray Tracing in one weekend um, to implement the Ray Tracer here. And the reason we did it on the computer instead of on Pico here is because to generate uh, one 400 pixel wide horizontal block of uh, like pixels, it take five minutes for like these complex, um, like these complex um, rows right here. So there is no way for us to like reasonably generate the Pico or to generate the image in time on uh, on the Pico for this demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially what we did was um, we have, uh, to make this program faster, we did some optimizations. So one thing we did was in, um, so, in the camera.h, which generates um, the image, we split it across 20 cores or 20 threads. Um, and then each thread would try to access a mutex where uh, once a thread, uh, once a third passes through the mutex, it's able to, um, it's able to communicate to the Pico through UART. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Pico can then, will then receive um, that thread's pixels and then write that corresponding line. Um, and then one thing we had to do, um, or, or the reason we had to use a mutex was because um, because if a thread was, or if the Pico was currently writing a row um, and, it, and it was like, and another thread uh, sent pixels across, or it sent picos, pixels to the Pico, then that request would be drop, dropped because um, the Pico is currently blocked trying to write those pixels. So not only do we have like, have this mutex here mm -hmm. that writes to the Pico, but we also have to have um, like that Pico send a signal back to the thread saying that it's finished and that, um, and that like that thread can release that lock and then have another thread write so that no, so that all the rows are written. Um, okay. and then one thing we also had to do was we had to blur out these, uh, black, uh, we had to like black out the last pixels, which, um, people yeah, talk yeah. about. So, wait, yeah, so there are like just a few things about, so like going back to what it was like the, yeah, so like the RGB PIO, this was something that, oh, yeah, something that we spent quite a bit of time on was that, out the, was that like we only so like we use like this sm config set set pins mm -hmm. to like clear out like the um to like zero out the like pins for like the 
for like the planking stage but the thing is the spec only supports the set set pins to have five pins so mm -hmm. like only so like only like the first five um pins which are like red are like blank properly blank mm -hmm. while the other ones aren't so like if we so like before we would just get a image that would just be all all hues of like red and like all the green and blue would not appear so like to trick the um pio to trick like the vga into thinking that we're going into blanking we set this whole entire last column to be all black pixels so that we and so that we're like simulating like entering the blanking stage in by like forcing it to be all black and then so by doing this we are able to get all the color all 16 like bits colors to be able to display on the vga screen yeah cool so it cost you one column and then right. so yeah. unfortunately it's 399 by 300 sure, instead sure. Of 400 by 300 um, that's but, a pretty good deal. Yeah, exactly. But in exchange for 16 bit or 65,000 colors, I think that's very worth yeah, it. I can't believe we lost 0.25% of our pixels. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> right. And then basically, because of the multi threaded, because of the fact that we multi threaded the entire library, uh -huh. uh, it basically means that that's the reason why you see the lines are drawn out of, out of order. Yeah. It's because there's multiple threads on our computer that's all running. Sure. In Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And can you so so there's a few pieces of hardware down here. Can yes. you just briefly speak to what each of these is responsible for? Right. Uh, you so, mentioned this is the these are the color bits, right? Right. Yeah. So this Pico we were initially going to run our ray tracer on, and okay. that's how we were able to verify that the ray tracer actually works because I ported the application over and it runs, except it takes about one day to fully render <laughs> okay. the entire yeah. image. Okay. So we do plan on putting this video onto the website, but it just takes a really, really, really like long a time. Like a time-lapse video. Right, exactly. Okay. But okay. we will we plan on time-lapsing it just for this purpose. And then this memory chip here is rather interesting. So we had initially aimed to do the exact same project, except at uh, double the resolution in each direction, so 800 by 600. Uh -huh. uh, but it seems like, number one, the memory chip, uh, it takes a really long time to interface because even though the write and read times only take 10 nanoseconds, <laughs> Uh, it takes a lot longer for the Picos to actually respond to that information, which means that we end up running out of a timing issue. Hmm. And so we worked around this by trying to decrease the resolution, but in doing so, I actually killed the chip by sending <laughs> six volts directly into the power line. So this isn't doing anything? Yeah, so okay. unfortunately, okay. The mem I killed the memory chip, and so after that, seven of the lines were knocked out. Gotcha. And so the, the images are stored in onboard flash memory? On so it's stored in onboard RAM, actually. Onboard on RAM, okay. Yeah. And so the images, so the static images here are the ones stored in flash. Right, okay. And these are actually, the images are just being DMA'd over into memory. When okay. you press the button, it just triggers a DMA interrupt, which sends the image from flash into memory. Gotcha. Golly. Yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah, so definitely the coolest thing about this are those colors. And yes. so... Yeah. That's the reason why we have all these sample images that are really colorful, and I think, yeah, this it looks beautiful. Awesome, I agree. Yeah. Really cool demo, thank you guys. Thank you.